Where are the snakes? Show us where the snakes are. <laughs> My name is Steve Ludwin, and I have a weird fascination with the serpent. Hidden in my understair closet, unbeknownst to my neighbors, are an array of very dangerous snakes. That's an Indian cobra. That's a tree viper. This is called a tangerine Honduran milk snake. That's called a green tree python. But it's beautiful, right? And I regularly milk and inject myself with their venom. The cobra venom helps when I'm skating. I've learned to actually start moving like a snake. It actually starts giving you power. Snakes have been historically feared and vilified as satanic, but I have always had a strong affinity with them. In this series, I am on a quest to discover the places where snakes lie at the heart of culture. The world is running out of anti-venom. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people are dying from snake bites, and the current methods of production can't keep up. Anti-venom today is made uh, in horses. I have all those impurities, and you can actually die from that. But scientists in Copenhagen are working on a new solution, me. Because Steve is very unique. He has built up a library of antibodies within his blood. My blood, now partly immune to venom after years of injections, might be able to solve the crisis. We will only have one antibody, and that's the one from Steve. So he's unique in every way, and therefore the main reason for starting this project at all. I'm going to Costa Rica to learn how we currently treat victims, that method's dangers, and why I therefore may be needed to save these lives. Costa Rica pretty much has, you know, the great white shark. And this is Snake City. The snake that I'm really interested in, the most infamous snake here is called Terciopelo, which is the fur de lance. So if you get bit by this snake, you start bleeding through any orifice. You can bleed through your eyes, through your gums, through your dick or vagina, um, any orifice. And it is a very painful, horrible death if you don't get treatment quickly. Today we're going to meet a guy called Christian, who's a snake expert here, and he's going to show us the best spots to look for the venomous snakes. Hola. Hi, man. How are you? Christian. Como estas? Mucho gusto. Uh, mucho gusto. Nice to meet you. All right. Javier is the local farmer that helps us with uh, collecting all the snakes in the area, just to make sure the people, they don't kill the snakes. All right, excellent. Snakes, hidden amongst the trees and fields, are a constant danger for farmers and their cattle. In Costa Rica alone, there are over 10 million deadly snakes made up from 139 species. ¿Dónde la encontraron ayer? La encontramos aquí. Allá abajo. Qué lindo. This is um, botriches laterales. We call them lora. It's, it is a dead leaf snake, so. Yeah. Tree tree, that's where they live. The venomous lora snake is endemic to Costa Rica. One bite is like a sledgehammer to your flesh, causing your skin to swell. Can you understand now why yeah. they have like many accidents with collecting coffee? Yeah, crazy. They don't realize that there is a snake in there. Yeah. They just take the snake and get bitten, just like that. That is hard to see. Mm -hmm. This snake, hopefully its venom is going to be used for anti-venom. After seeing how easy it is to be bitten by one of my reptilian friends in Costa Rica, I wanted to go to the local hospital to find out how they currently treat victims. Pues habría que valorar al paciente y darle evolución, ver los tipos de orificio, ver si tiene lesión asociada, ver si hay edema o problemas a nivel neurológico con sensaciones diferentes en piel, con parálisis en los ojos, sangrados, sí. What are the dangers using horse's blood and antivenom? Viene hecho con eh, proteína animal. In algunos casos, hay gente que es alérgica a este tipo de suero. It would be safer to use human antibodies rather than horse antibodies. Pues un animal pues, va a producir más, más reacción, más rechazo de, de, del cuerpo humano, ¿verdad? Before I headed to the lab, I went into the jungle to find the dangerous snakes that make every day potentially life-threatening for locals. Contrary to what you might imagine, I'd actually recently had a series of bad bites which had reminded me of their majestic yet fatal power. I can't lie, my pulse was racing. Sun's just gone down. This is a very dangerous time because, you know, the snakes are out. These snakes are so well camouflaged. If you look at the ground, I mean, it can be anywhere. And, you know, it can be quite dangerous walking around in the jungle at this time for everybody, for everybody involved, even the crew. There actually was a, a film crew um, 
filming a few years ago where one of the camera guys got bit by a fertile ants and he almost lost his, his foot and stuff. So you want to be careful. Do not get bit by a fertile ants. So yeah, I'm really used to my snakes in my vivariums in Highbury and Islington. So being here in Costa Rica in the rainforest is a very different prospect. Like I said, you want to watch where you're stepping and keep your eyes out and look for snakes. We got uh, some safety ways to walk inside a mountain. So I want somebody, maybe one of the crew yeah. to walk. You lie all the floor just to make sure you're not gonna bit by a further lance to keep it safe. You can see how you could get bit so easily just by brushing against, you know, you saw how that snake was. It can be a snake on any of these branches. I'll keep an eye out for things on the ground. Come on, eyelash vipers, where are you? Oh, you hear that? False alarm. It was a, it was a leaf. All right, we've just heard somebody screaming. They found a snake. So follow me and let's see what we got. We don't know what it is yet. It's going to be a tree snake. Laura, both rackets. Oh wow, well spotted. And you know we could have, we could have walked by 15 snakes already without knowing it. You know they're just, they're very difficult to see. They are, they are very common to bite you like on your feet. All right, somebody screams snake. We have another one. Let's go. Donde estas? Oh, wow. Fuck, man. <gasps> yeah, it's an eyelash viper. The deadly eyelash viper possesses heat-sensitive organs, allowing them to find potential prey through their body heat. This makes them deadly night hunters. Its venom is highly toxic, closing down both your cardiovascular and central nervous systems. And I've got one in my living room in London. Can you, can you see the, the eyelash? Yeah. A very beautiful, looks like a male. Yeah, another male, lots of males out tonight. Actually, I get bitten by one of these ones. I've been bitten twice by an eyelash viper. Uh -huh. How was it? And I have to say, it's extremely painful. Uh -huh. You didn't need to take any medication? No. Do something for the pain? No, I didn't uh -huh. take You're not that badass. Mm -hmm. I know. Would you like to kiss it? No. <laughs> If this snake bit anyone else, they could be dead within 30 minutes. But because I've been injecting myself for so long and am part serpent, my blood is almost immune. I was on my way to the lab back in civilization, which is developing a whole new antivenom to try and save those not dumb enough to do my years of systematic masochism. One of Christian's squad came with us to drop off the snake we had found on the farm. Hola. Mucho gusto, Steve. So that its venom could be used to make anti-venom in the lab. Hello, how are you? You're gonna be okay here. Hello? Hey, buddy. Hi. How are you doing? I'm Steve. I'm Graven Corrales. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. We have brought you a Bothrichus lateralis. So how is this snake gonna be important? How is it gonna be used? So right here in the Serpentarium, we use the snake for venom production in order to prepare the hunter venoms, you know, that are used for human beings. Here you can see how we keep the venom, and those are the venoms in use in order to produce the hunter venoms. Here you can see we have more venom, more venom, wow. and more venom. That's a lot of venom. <laughs> it is. How many, how many people do you think you could kill with this whole freezer? Oh God, that's a good question. 20,000, 50,000. It's a lot. It's very expensive to produce antivenom and the pharmaceutical companies are slowing down the production. You know, in the year 2018, it means that snake bite deaths are gonna go up. So just to, to be clear, we just wanna make sure that nothing bad happens. So Danilo is gonna help me to take the snakes outside and everything, but you need to handle them. On a hook, you know, at some point, but because it's way heavy and big and nasty. They yeah, 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 no, are, they no. They are nasty. I will, I, I'd prefer you to do okay. that, yeah. I wasn't scared or anything, just following the local official protocol. Maybe you can help me. There you go, we can go together. Those are the rattlesnake. Which way are we going? Hmm? This way? Yeah, outside. Danilo, may you? I feel like a kid in a candy store here. This is, I can't explain 
how exciting it is for you know a snake lover like myself just to be around these snakes. I mean, obviously they're extremely dangerous, but to me it's like looking at puppies and kittens. I have this great, great love. It's hard to explain. The fertile ants is one of the most venomous snakes in the world. It's often found near human settlements, resulting in it being responsible for half the region's snake bites. This is one I would probably opt to not have at home. This is one of the largest fertile ants I have ever seen. Just imagine a lot of dry leaves yeah. right there. Exactly. You don't see it. So if this fertile ants were to bite a human, can you tell me what would happen? So the symptoms will come out immediately. In 20 minutes, you black out with diarrhea and vomiting. You get a hypovolemic shock. The bleeding with this species, sometimes local, sometimes systematical. You will bleed from every hole from your body if you don't get the anti-venom. Yeah, you close it. There you go. Bye-bye. Time to be milked. All right. So prior to the milking, I'm gonna put the fertilants to this tank full of CO2, and that's gonna give me a window of time of, of five minutes. Wow, so that snake's going into the CO2 now, right? Yeah. So now we wait, like about three minutes. Three minutes. And then we will see when it's sedated. So the CO2 is already in there? It's already in there, it's full. Yeah, it's sedated, you can get, you can get it. So it's very important to grab in the cloaca. Behind here, there is a second fang. As you can see, they change the fangs. Wow, I'd love to have that fang. That's the old one. Wow. That's your souvenir. Yes, I'll take that. <laughs> and here you can see how the venom is coming out. Yeah. It's full of venom. Wow. Look yeah. this. Wow. Okay. So now Danilo is going to present the fangs in the plastic and then during the massage in the venom glands. That's a lot of venom. Yes. You would not want that in your leg. Wow, look at that. Bang, 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 bang. That's amazing. I've, I've never seen so much venom come out of a snake before. Just incredible. The size of those fangs, the amount of venom. It's very, it's incredible what these people are doing here, you know? This is to save human lives. Thank you so much for showing me all these beautiful snakes. In the current process, they inject the horses with venom, wait up to six months for their natural antibodies to develop, and then synthesize that into an anti-venom. I'm hoping that my blood can set these heroes free. I feel like when I'm around these horses, I mean, for me, it's unique. Brothers, sisters, you know, I understand. I'm doing the same with my body as these are. I mean, exactly. I'm developing antibodies just like they are. So we're gonna see some horses being injected today. Yeah, so we're gonna inject a couple of the horses that we use to produce anti-venom. You're saving lives. You're saving people's lives. Yes. How do you keep up with the demand for snake bite victims around the world? Well, it's really hard, actually, since we get new horses till the time that, that um, anti-venom is sold. It can take up to six months or more. And what do you think about the possibility of the future of using human antibodies? So anything that improves the process and helps us um, save more lives, it would be great. As well as being a lengthy process, the majority of snake bites hit poorer countries. So big pharmaceutical companies in wealthier parts of the world have begun to deprioritize funding for antivenom. This has led to a chronic shortage. It was time to follow my equine hero's blood into the lab. So this is where we separate the venoms to understand how it's built up. Have you ever heard of anybody here in Costa Rica having an allergic reaction to the antivenom or they, serum? They do, yeah, sometimes they're like maybe 10 to 15% of the patients develop a mild allergic reaction. Because of these things, it's, it's so important what you are doing, develop the human antibodies for the future. So here's the finished product room. After the milking process that you 
already saw. Yeah. Uh, we get that venom uh, and we immunize horses with, with it. Eventually it gets through steps of purification, filtrations, etc. At the end, we will get a sterile solution of antibodies from horses that were, have been immunized with the venoms of different snakes. After the antivenom is done at the plant, it is time for the part I'm least comfortable with, where the venom is tested on these poor mice, martyrs to the cause. Vamos a hacer una prueba de potencia. Necesitamos saber qué tan eficaz es el antiveneno para neutralizar el veneno. We have to wait 24 hours to 48 hours to see if they survive. I really hope they do. These mice should be given awards, mouse awards. Bruno, Alberto, and Jose are clearly doing really important work here in Costa Rica. It saves lives around the world every day. However, they are fundamentally fighting a losing battle, as not only can they not keep up with the sheer demand, but their method for mass production can be exceedingly dangerous. I only hope that the team in Copenhagen will find a way to develop my blood to make this happen. So far, they have succeeded in isolating my bone marrow, extracting my DNA, and inserting it into a virus. From this, they've managed to create a library of a billion virus particles, each with their specific antibody. Now, the final stage is to test which snake venoms this will work on. When I started off injecting snake venom, it was purely recreational. I had no idea that I may genuinely be able to save thousands of lives in the future. Do you speak English? Habla español mejor? Caballo, como estas? Qué lindo. Oh, pobrecito. Hopefully in the future, Mr. Horse, you're going to be put out to pasture and you won't have to do this anymore. Hopefully I'm going to set your people free.